let's dive into where um, a lot of folks want to talk about content development. To me, presentations should do one thing. They should either inform, they should inspire, or they should persuade your audience, right? So when I look at that, there's also this kind of this sequencing that we use, and it's down the left-hand side. We pick our topic after we identify, of course, our audience, but we pick our topic. We brainstorm on this, and the more heads, the better. Uh, we develop a theme around how we're going to present the presentation. We add the visuals. We put in the interactivity, and we rehearse. So let's talk a little bit more about these in detail. First, topics with online events. Now, there's online events, there's web conferencing, there's all kinds of different ways to run online events. But when I think about online events, I'm thinking about a platform that is kind of a one-way stream, right? It's one to many, really. And so what works well in online events are right now we're seeing a lot of success around thought leaderships. We're seeing a lot of success around panels. Another one would be series. Um, one that's very popular that not only works for Byte Talk, but a lot of our clients is that they'll run series. So they'll run a part one, a part two, and a part three, and that continues brings your audience back. It allows you to progressively profile them um, through surveys, and it also allows you to kind of break up the content and help to develop a relationship. Another thing that's important, this is a good example here, Securities Docket um, is a client that runs um, a, a lot of events rel related to the securities industry. Uh, and I, this, there couldn't be a better example. And, in fact, he's got another event I could have used. But this, uh, what you're seeing is this event that he did back in January of last year, called, right around when the Madoff litigation thing was coming around. Um, and so this was a highly successful event for this gentleman. And then he just ran another event talking about the update on TARP. So, you know, this is kind of the exciting stuff is that you can really kind of be cutting edge, you know, top of mind topics, what's in the media now. So that's the things that we look at. What's the format of the event? Is this a series, a roundtable? Is this going to be a panel? Is this going to be thought leadership? And then where is the knowledge gap? What are people telling us they want to hear from? Those are the two things that help us identify what our topic is. Next, we go into a group brainstorm, and you're actually seeing Catherine there. That's actually our CEO, Paul, who helped us out on an event in the past. Um, and so we get a lot of input from everybody, and what we find is the more input, certainly the better, right? And so we'll just put together a very brief outline. We'll go ahead and you know brainstorm it on a whiteboard, then we'll put it into a formal out outline first. We do, I never jump into PowerPoint and just start designing slides. It's probably the most stressful way to host an online event. Next, we'll develop a theme, and in fact, we're going to look at this theme in just a little bit about event promotion, this nice theme where we use kind of a progressive timeline. So we're going to look at what we do four weeks pre-event and what we do four weeks post-event. And really, the theme to me is just a way for you to link your ideas between sections. You know, how can you do that effectively so that your audience can really follow you throughout the storytelling, right? But what also helps is just putting some, you know, some components in the slides that allow them to identify where they're at in the discussion. What a lot of folks are still doing, um, which surprised me a little bit, but I know that we all have to change at some point, adding a lot of text, you know, reading the slides, adding a ton of text, putting, basically, it's their crutch, right? We hear this, that people will put too many bullet points and they'll use it as a crutch. So, you know, what really is that main point that you're trying to get across on that slide? And then pick a visual. And um, here are some resources. A lot of folks might know of iStock Photo, a very popular resource. You can get photos from anywhere from a dollar to $50, depending on what you're looking for. You can get vectors. You can get all kinds of rich media content there. Photolio, photos.com. Flickr's a great one. Um, Flickr does have some... Um, uh, it's not a paid site, so certainly there needs to be some credit to the images that you do decide to use. But pick out an image that best helps set that reference point for your audience on the main point that you're going to get across and talk around that point. Next, I would say always use interactivity. And the reason why is that not only does it allow us to kind of benchmark against our peers like we did at the beginning, right? It allows us to all kind of set the stage and understand of the audience here, am I among those already hosting events, the 43%, or am I among those that are still kind of getting started or have not hosted anything at all? So benchmarking across your peers makes the event a little bit more interactive, certainly. But also, this is customer insight. So all of this information ma maps back, and you can get a good idea of who your audience was, who doesn't host events, who does. So if you are doing lead generation or lead nurturing, the in-event questions, or we call them votes, you can call them polls, are just as valuable, in my opinion, to the pre-event registration surveys that you can add inside of online events. Um, 
And then last, it's, you know, once you get that information in there and once you get the slides together, it's about practicing, really. And we actually, I go through, when I'm doing an event, I usually will start practicing before the slides even start because it's when you start talking it out, talking out the brainstorm and thinking in your head what you're going to say when a lot of this starts changing. And then once you get into slide design, uh, oftentimes uh, you can get locked into one position or another. So let's um, uh, let me tell you about preparing your content. This is a whole event that we did, and there is the Bitly URL at the top. So if you'd like to see this in full, uh, it's got a lot more to it. I abbreviated it quite a bit, so I'd encourage everybody to go check out preparing your content. <laughs> 